We can use hypothesis tests when we're trying to test a claim about a population parameter or about a characteristic about a population. Now hypothesis tests have some key components that are true no matter what application of the hypothesis test you're doing. And that's what this segment is all about, is those key components about a hypothesis test. And the key components can be done in terms of what's called the p-value method of making our decision about our hypothesis test, or the traditional method of making our decision about a hypothesis test. And this video clip specifically is on the p-value method. Now when we're looking at a hypothesis test, one thing that we see from the very beginning in the setup of the question is what's called the level of significance. And the level of significance is usually stated in the question and denoted by the Greek letter alpha. And it is the level at which we're willing to make what's called a type 1 error, where we would reject the null when in fact it was really true. So that's our um, type of error that we're willing to do with the level of significance. Typically, the level of significance is um, decimal values such as 0.05 or 0.10, values around in there, that we're willing to make that type 1 error like 5% of the time or that sort of situation. Now, the other parts of a hypothesis test to start with is to actually set out in sentence form what it is that you're testing with the claim. And to do that in an organized manner in a way that people can understand what it is that you're talking about, we set up what are called the null and alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is denoted in H sub 0 and the alternate hypothesis is denoted with an H sub 1, or sometimes you'll see it as an H sub A, A being the first letter of the word alternate. So these are the designated ways that we can symbolize to someone what our null hypothesis is and what our alternate hypothesis is. Now, in our null hypothesis, if we're testing a claim about a parameter of a population, we'll use the symbol for the population parameter and then an equal sign and then a numerical value up here. So we'll have our whatever our parameter is. And if we're testing a claim about a particular parameter out of a population, it'll be the parameter is equal to a number. If we're comparing the parameters from two different populations, then it'll be the parameter of one population equal to the parameter of the other population. Um, and if we're looking at a characteristic about a population that we're trying to claim, then we would look at a whole um, sentence that talks about what that particular characteristic is. In the alternate hypothesis, this would be the um, statement that we would be able to make if we would have significant evidence that would allow us to reject the null. And in the alternate hypothesis is where you get the parameter being varied away from whatever you had as your designation of your equality in your null hypothesis. So it might be either the parameter is either less than whatever your comparison is, or you might have your alternate hypothesis being the parameter is greater than what you had in your null hypothesis. Or the third option would be possibly if you have your alternate hypothesis being whatever your parameter is, is not equal to. Now when our specific question is worded so that we're trying to see if our parameter of our population is actually less than a particular value, then this is called a left tail test. If we have in our alternate hypothesis that it has a greater than within the alternate hypothesis, it's a right tail test. And if it's that our parameter is not equal to, then it's called a two-tail test. So if we're doing a hypothesis test concerning the population mean, 
the parameter symbol for mean is mu. So we would have mu is equal to a value, and our alternate would go depending on whatever the test asks you to test, whether it says test that the population mean is now less than 15, for example, then we would have in our alternate, mu is less than 15. In our null, we would have mu is equal to 15. So we get all of this information by the question in the hypothesis test. Now the way we make our decision about our conclusion of our hypothesis test depends on whether you're going to do the p-value determination or whether you're going to do a traditional method. For the p-value way of deciding whether you're going to reject the null or fail to reject the null is the p-value is calculated to be the area to the extreme of the test statistic that comes from your sampled information or the probability that the probability being to the extreme of the test statistic. Now the reason that this way of making our hypothesis test is so popular is that many of the graphing calculators or the statistical software packages will always report this p-value whenever you do the data entry and ask it to do a hypothesis test. So while it seems like it would be a hard thing to find, it, many times it's actually just a reported value to you. And so we can make our decision by just comparing the p-value being to the extreme of the test statistic with the alpha and seeing what that comparison gives us. If our p-value is smaller than our alpha, no matter what test we do, whether it's a left tail, a right tail, or a two tail, because that would be taken in account when the software package reports the p-value to you. If the p-value is smaller than your alpha, you reject the null. If the p-value is not smaller than your alpha, you fail to reject the null. So if the p-value is smaller than your alpha, then you can reject the null hypothesis. If it's not smaller than your alpha, then you cannot reject the null. So it's a very easy comparison from something that your statistical package will report to you or your graphing calculator will report to you. Now how the, the um, hypothesis testing works is that the null hypothesis has to be what is the status quo unless you have sufficient evidence from the hypothesis test by the p-value being smaller than the alpha to actually say, no, that's not correct, I'm going to reject the null. And if you can reject the null, that allows you to say that you have sufficient evidence to support the claim that's stated in the alternate. If your p-value is not a smaller number than your alpha, you can't reject the null. So you say that you cannot reject the null, and so you do not have sufficient evidence to support the claim of whatever the alternate says. So you're kind of stuck with the null unless you have sufficient evidence by your p-value being smaller than your alpha to reject it. And then, and only then, would you be able to say you support the alternate claim. And always remember, when you're going through and you're giving the final result for your hypothesis test, you want to write out your answer in sentence form and you want to state it in the specifics of the question making sure that you also state at what level of significance the hypothesis test was done.